What's up, everyone? It's Silly Girl Carmen. We are back with another episode of Wonderful, and I'm happy to be talking to Naya today. How are you doing? I'm doing very well, Carmen. Thanks for having me. Yes. Um, so I met, I well, I got to see Naya for the first time at an XOXA party at the Good Room in Brooklyn. I was visiting in October, and you were playing, and I was just like, I, I was staying in there for a while, and I was like, I'm loving everything you played. You were just in the zone. It was really nice. Yeah. So I got to, I'm glad I got to see you there. Um. So where where are you from originally, and then are you still based in New York? Yeah, so um, I'm originally from New Jersey. I uh, grew up there, and then um, I moved to Brooklyn, where I'm based right now, in um, 2018. So I've been there since... I'm currently in Detroit, <laughs> so and that's why I asked about time zones. But um, yeah, so I'm currently in Detroit just visiting. But yeah, I'm Brooklyn based right now, originally from New Jersey, born and raised. Yeah. Nice. OK, that's I did see that on your Instagram. I was going to ask you about that. And I, it just slipped my mind because that's, mm-hmm. that's my base. So we're actually closer than. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's where I, I'm from Detroit. I'm in Detroit. So hi. Oh, my we're, God. We're probably like right next to each other or something. We probably are. <laughs> <laughs> well, very cool. Um, okay, so how long have you been a DJ as well? So this is going to blow your mind. Um, actively, like practicing, I've been a DJ for less than two years. <laughs> nice. But um, I've been in music for a very long time, since I was 19. Um, I come from a publishing background, so I've spent most of my life you know, collecting metadata for songwriter catalogs and you know, putting in all the fancy schmancy sexy stuff that you would love to hear about but I'm gonna skip over because it's so important (laughs) um but uh recently you know it that involved a lot of me um just looking at people's music and listening to so many different types of music and personally I do like to find the kind of uh blueprint of songs and cultures that I'm listening to and I that just leads me to research but um I finally decided to, you know, not hide behind the curtains anymore um, because that job is very much like, you know, you'll see my work, but you'll never hear about me. Um, And I do like to talk to people. I do like to connect with people. And I thought that DJing was like a really, really good way to um, get to know people a little more intimately. And so I decided, you know, back in 2019, no, not in 2019, probably 2021, that um, I would just try my hand for a year, see how it felt, and if it if it felt good, then I would keep going. Um, and now I'm deep in it. I am deep in it now. So yeah, it's been a really really fun time. Nice. That's super dope. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's always cool to see what led people to finally like pick up yeah. DJing. So that's cool that you already were in like some music background and everything. Yeah. Um. So for our first question, what's what's your favorite thing about the music culture and scene in New York? Maybe you could tell us kind of about that how that's been yeah um so I actually kind of dived into it even before I moved to New York um my first introduction actually was with XOXA in their year two they're coming up on their sixth year anniversary Mm -hmm. um and my friend Kira who founded XOXA one of the founders um she kind of invited me to XOXA's parties at the time they were doing dry party then you know a mix of parties where it you know there was options for alcohol but I just thought it was really cool that they had different gimmicks like bubbles and candy and you know um safe substance use practices like all this stuff that was like super formal and um um, educational so that was my introduction into nightlife in New York which was I'm very grateful for because that um speech is become a lot more prevalent now with you know safe substance use and um just safe spaces within the club scene um and those and those parties were great you know I I got to go you know around like Williamsburg I got to go up Bushwick and um even like deeper into Brooklyn to see some artists play so Mm -hmm. it was it was really cool and now it's you know it's bustling everyone either wants to be outside or they want to be behind the booth. And it's really fun to see everyone be creative. Um, you know, there's, I've, I'm sure you've heard, there's been some uh, nightlife scares with uh, certain venues closing down mm-hmm. and then opening back up. Um, luckily, 
most of those venues have opened back up and it's brought some of those um, OGs back to those clubs and it's nice to see them in your own city. So it's been really, really dope. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. That's super dope. Yeah, I um, I came to visit New York when I, like I said, in October and I, I had just missed the energy of being in that like pace and creativity mm -hmm. of the city. But yeah, I'm like thinking about it. I could only imagine New York is probably such a hub for you can get a, you know, I'm sure a lot of people come through and, and yeah. want to be in New York anyway. I know the weekend before I was there, I know Black Coffee had his huge show out there and I, I feel like everybody was there. Yep. That's cool. Louis Vega's been um, touring around recently. Yep. So he's been, you know, at $3 Bill. And I think Carrie Chandler was there the month before. So it's like cool to just see people just come back and just play for us. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Um, so what is your, when you're preparing a set or heading into a new space as a DJ, what is your thought process or preparation practices? Do you have any insight into that yeah um i'm a busy mind i mm -hmm. i have so many ideas and so i want to get them all out but then i have to force myself to just sit and just let everything kind of flow through me because the minute i get busy minded that's how i'm going to be behind the booth so um i do have good rituals i make sure i make myself a good meal um, I might do like a mask or mm -hmm. um, just kind of like do some self-care because I also don't know how long I'm going to be out for. So I just want to make sure I'm taken care of before I take care of other people. Um, and I will take a, you know, like a second pass at some of the selections I have. Um, if, if not a playlist, I, I kind of, uh, I don't do playlists as much anymore, but I've, what I've recognized is that what helps me personally is um, just connecting a little bit closer to certain producers or artists that I do want to highlight or like instrumentals that I do want to highlight in the coming set. So mm -hmm. I'll go back and think about, you know, what kind of sounds, what kind of instruments I want to hear in those sets. And I'll think, OK, I know how to pinpoint, you know, this uh, Kenny Larkin track. OK, I think I know, I know what goes next. So kind of playing um, like six degrees of separation a little bit before I before I go. And then I just make sure phone keys, wallet, mask, USB records, if it's hybrid, because um, mm -hmm. that would be terrible. But um, yeah, that's that's basically the thought process before I head out the door. Nice. I love that. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, I think that's. I like the way you, you put that because I, I think I'm always thinking like, how are other DJs preparing for these things? And I like the the added bit of like the self-care, like you want to feel good before yeah. you go into these things and stuff. So that's really important. Um, so is there anything or something exciting that you're working toward or putting out into the universe for 2023? It could be in regards to DJing or just in, in general, whatever. Yeah. Um, on the topic of producers, I have... You know, it's it's funny when you're you become a DJ and like, I grew up around a lot of house music. That's like my that's like my language is like house music. But I never had to put a name to the artists I was listening to. Mm -hmm. So growing up, it was um, a matter of just like listening. Like I knew melodies, I knew lyrics, but I didn't ever knew who those people were. And so the past couple of years has been kind of me going to clubs and me like dancing and then being like, oh, my God, I remember that when I was like four years old. <laughs> like, what's that right. song? Um, and so I'm kind of like decoding my memories in a point where I have to catalog them and recatalog them to make sure I actually know, um, what I'm listening to, which is, which is new for me. But, um, that being said, it's, it's kind of, uh, gained my interest in production. Like I eventually, I know I do want to do some production and I have some ideas. I'm just, I'm in the process of like discovering what kind of sounds I enjoy. Um, and I think that approach kind of goes back to how I prepare for sets. It's like, what kind of producers I want to listen to, like what kind of instruments. So I think it's a really good practice. Um, another thing I'm looking forward to is uh, DJing not in state, uh, mm -hmm. out of country. Um, definitely would like to do some stuff in the EU, Montreal. Um, and I have some... Uh, producers that I look up to out of Paris because of the French touch scene mm -hmm. over there. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm hopeful 
and I'm just kind of grateful for anything that comes up and this whole journey has been really dope and I kind of trust it tenfold so yeah it's it's been really exciting um and and actually as we speak I'm in Detroit because I have a show um and it's yes. gonna be all vinyl um and oh, cool. actually yeah I learned um I learned how to play vinyl maybe a couple months ago um mm -hmm. through the kind of privilege of of having some MK2s handed down to me from a family friend who saw I was like doing really good in DJing. He's like, oh my God, you know, I used to be a DJ. They're kind of laying mm -hmm. in storage. If you want these, you can oh, have nice. them. And then, yeah, and, and I've been um, restoring some of my family's records, which my dad totally forgot that he had in the basement, but <laughs> they, had, um, they had been kind of damaged from Hurricane Sandy back in the day. So um, I've been restoring and, and reviving them and they're all playable. Um, so all of that together has been forcing me to kind of take the practice super seriously and, and very intimately. Um, and now I get to kind of send on that same practice here in Detroit where, you know, the practice really was developed, turntablism. Um, and it's it's been really dope to, to be around the people that kind of like made the art what it is um mm -hmm. and i'm happy to like bring it back so yeah nice that's perfect yeah i love that you're like right in the cusp of a of a path yeah. and the evolution of like exploring more that's really great yeah where where are you you said it's tonight you're playing yeah i'm gonna be at paramita um, okay cool starts at 10 yeah it's gonna be me and dj etta uh we're just gonna be back and forth back and forth all night Okay, really nice. <laughs> maybe maybe I'll be out and about. By the time I Where? post this, that'll be irrelevant. Oh my gosh. But, for, but for thank you right now, I needed to yeah, know. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, yeah. So do you have any, we're going to wrap it up with one more question. Do you yeah, have any course. advice to people who want to start DJing but aren't sure where to start? I think because you're you're fresh too, I think it would be cool to see maybe what, you're, what you would tell somebody who maybe was in a place you were yeah, trying to start. Uh, yeah, um... It's been interesting because I feel like my, my DJ um, journey has been very non-linear. And I think that is the case. People kind of see DJs go at this slope and they kind of expect the same thing. You know, if I do this, if I post this, if I act a certain way, I'll only go up. And sometimes mm -hmm. it doesn't happen that way. Sometimes you're up here, then you're here, then you're here, then you're stagnant, then you're up and down. So, um, that being said, I would tell someone to kind of go into it uh, as a student, just learning, you know, no, with no expectation of, of getting a specific thing from it. Um, granted, I'm kind of seeing it as an art. Some people see it as a job. Some people see it as a gig. Some mm -hmm. people see it as a chance to for people to know them. You know, people get what they want out of DJing. Um, but to 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 kind of keep yourself from being disappointed i think it's um important to go into it as just you know sharing um something that you would like to communicate with other people and keep doing it you know with the hopes that it benefits someone um in the best way possible because i think those it, it seems very generic but i think that mindset um puts the pressure off of trying to be a person um and and being more selfless with the uh, with djing itself um yeah and uh and gigs will come yeah that that part everyone is always worried about oh my god like i see you with gigs and like the gigs will come you can't force a gig um the lineup might not be your style and you get there and you're like, okay, well, maybe this isn't me. That you know, you can vet. It's okay to like say yes and no. Um, but yeah, gigs will come, um, and it's DJing is more than gigs. But yes, gigs will come. I think for people starting out, yeah. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, I love that. I think yeah, I love the way you put it. You putting the more the intention of like knowing what you want out of it, and then you know being true to like making it about something rather than like, oh, this looks like the new popular thing to do. You yeah. Know? Yeah. But it, yeah, it is hard sometimes. Yeah. I mean, and that's what I realized too, even for myself being, whether you're new or somebody that's been doing it for a while, there's always going to be those windows of time where you're like, 
you like I know some DJs that they've been doing it for a long time and they're just as hungry or as possibly concerned about when is the next bigger yeah. thing or what you know where where next so I right. think with a lot of these like entertainment or craft industries we're always it's a hustle you know like any mm -hmm. where's the next part of work where's the next thing I need to be doing so so yeah that's I love the way you put that um well that is all the questions we have so I'm super excited we got to do this and i can't wait to share your mix and yes thank you so much and hopefully hopefully i'll see you now that you're in detroit or when i come back to new york as well <laughs> yes i'm so excited um yeah thanks so much for having me